So, good afternoon. You're all very welcome. Shane McCusker is my name. Intelligent Software, intel-sw.com. If you're watching this video, if you are connecting to the webinar, please make sure you've connected to me on LinkedIn. Love to hear what you think of it. Uh, let me know. I develop software and systems for the recruitment industry. I know there's some of my customers are listening and some people who aren't customers. Maybe some stage you will be. I would love to have you as a customer. Um, hopefully you'll be impressed with some of the stuff you can do for free uh, just by working a little bit smarter. If this way of working appeals to you, uh, you may well be interested in looking at the, the products that I develop to help recruiters work more effectively. If you are, check out our website, intel-sw.com. Right, that's the end of the sales pitch. On to today's activity, which is all about advanced sourcing for recruiters. <coughs> um, about four weeks ago, I ran my last webinar, and it was very popular. And as a result, we're going to try and expand on some of those ideas. I spent a bit of time talking about um, search operators, particularly associated with Google. And I've listed some of them here, uh, site colon, in title, in URL, file type. File type was the one I think sort of came, uh, came as a bit of a surprise to, to a lot of people in that it's not an obvious one. Uh, I hadn't spoken about it before. It's a very powerful search tool, so I, I just thought I'd mention it again uh, just to, to recap because it's a slightly unusual one and it does very interesting things. Specifically what it does is that the internet is full of stuff and most of it is not necessarily website stuff, it's other stuff, other stuff that contains information. And if you know where to go looking and what to go looking for, it is amazing what you can find. And file type asks Google or Bing, where we talked about a second search engine today, Bing, um, to go and look for not web pages but files and files of a particular type. Let me show, show you what I mean. I'm going to use, this is um, a little notepad and I'm just using this to store some, some Google searches. I'm going to copy this in. Uh, hopefully you can see, I'll just read it out. It says file type colon XLS space, space is important, open brackets, participant or delegate or attendee, close brackets, space, open brackets, accountant or accountancy or ACCA or SEMA. A couple of things. The spaces, the bits in between, I'll just remove the carriage return, the bits in between the brackets, Google will interpret as being an AND. So it says participant or delegate or attendee and accountant or accountancy or ACCA or SEMA. ORs, the OR bit, <clears throat> I'm not looking for the word OR. No. I'm telling Google to use OR in the sense that we mean OR when we speak in English or in, in its sense the way databases work. It's a logical operator. So I'm looking for accountant or accountancy or ACCA or SEMA. And this is the basis of Boolean search, the wonderful magical algebra that we use to tell search engines and databases how to get what we're looking for. And what we are trying to do is put yourself in the mind of a random stranger who happens to record something that mysteriously ends up on the internet. And what I'm interested in is trying to find documents that have a file type XLS. What's XLS? XLS is the file type associated with Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. What sort of information do you record on Excel spreadsheets? Say, for example, if you're organizing an event, an attracting you know, professional event. You might attract participants or delegates or attendees. And you might have a spreadsheet which lists them all. And some of those or all of those people may be accountants or mention accountancy or ACCA qualification or SEMA qualification. So this is a search to try and find those spreadsheets. Let me copy it into Google and show you what happens. Okay, straight copy. Google search. What do I get? I get a list, lots of them. 4,720, according to Google. That's Google's wild stab in the dark guess as to how many results it's found. It's totally irrelevant, really. It, it, Google's ability to guess how many results it has is mystifyingly strange and totally unrelated to how many it actually gets, but no matter. Um, it's a big number. And the second one on the list I've already clicked on because CIPFA was something I thought, I'll go and investigate that to see what that is. Turns out it is the Chartered Institute of Professional Financial Accountants. So I clicked on that, and lo and behold, it downloaded. I've already opened it up here. I'm not going to download it again because it plays havoc with my broadcasting webinars. What do you get? You get a list of attendees. 
on the 13th of July, which is not that long ago, uh, July Merseyside Maritime Museum delegate list. I've got a whole list of names. I've got a whole list of email addresses. They are members, our student members of the Chartered Institute, or, uh, Chartered Institute Professional Financial Accountants, and I've got job titles. What more do I want? I've got masses of amounts of information about just what I'm looking for. Lists and lists of accountants, and here they all are. I, I, I easy to, to connect with them, easy to reach out. Now this is just the first website, the first document that I found on Google. There are thousands of them. Change the terms, go looking, experiment with this file type operator. Doesn't need to be XLS. What else could it be? It could be a PDF. You're getting over a million hits on that according to Google, but lots of them. It could be, what else could it be? It could be, uh, is, 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 a, is a PowerPoint a PPS? I think it is. So we get PowerPoint slides. Uh, is uh, if, you, if you're actually looking for a database, it may be written in SQL. Database format produces all sorts of interesting things. These are people's, you know, actual code to create a database with lots and lots of data in it. So it's really, really interesting what, are, what, what it is you can find. Anyhow, that was a little bit of a recap from last, last time. Uh, let me just uh, move on here. Okay, I hope you can still hear me because my webinar thing just saying I lost connection, but according to the control panel, I'm back online again. So hopefully you can hear me. So um, <clears throat> one of the things I spent a lot of time last time talking about Google. Today I want to talk about another search engine, another search engine called Bing, www.bing.com. And Bing is Microsoft's version of Google, I suppose. And it's quite similar to Google, but different in the sense that it indexes all the pages differently. It has different search operators, slightly. And so effectively, if you do searches through Bing, you're almost certainly going to get different results to the results you would get from Google. And so what I would suggest you think about doing is whenever you do a search on Google, also run the search on Bing, see which one gives you the best results. Some of the operators are the same. Google supports OR, so does Bing. Google, whenever it's negating a website, I'll show you this later on, it uses a minus sign. Google also uses a minus sign, but you can also use the word not. So I'm looking for this and not whatever. Phrases are surrounded by quotation marks. This operator site, I've mentioned it in a number of occasions before, massively, massively useful operator, S-I-T-E colon, all in lowercase. What this does is it asks the search engine to just search one site. Last time I, I demonstrated it, we were looking at Google+. Plus. So you go site colon plus.google.com, and it will only return results from the Google Plus website. Today, I'm going to show you an example where we search LinkedIn. I'll show you the example now. Here it is. What I'm going to do is go site colon linkedin.com forward slash in, or site colon linkedin.com forward slash P-U-B. What I'm looking for are public profiles on LinkedIn of people. Everybody on LinkedIn can have a public profile. If they don't set the default security settings so they don't have uh, a public profile, then uh, you're going you're to have one. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at this in Bing. This is Bing, if anybody hasn't seen it before. Not dissimilar to Google, but different. Uh, and I'm going to put that in, and I'm going to look for accountants. Accountant. Okay. Do my search and see what I get. Okay. We get, as we could expect, lots of pages from LinkedIn. All of them are starting off www.linkedin slash P-U-B. www.linkedin forward slash I-N. That's what we were looking for. That's what we've got. And all, well, most of these pages are very useful to us. One of them isn't that useful to us. And it's this one right at the top. It says LinkedIn.com PUB, you think is what we're looking for, but unfortunately it has this bit immediately after it, slash DIR. DIR means it's a LinkedIn directory. What's LinkedIn directory? This is. It's a big list of names. It's not really what I'm looking for. What I wanted was a whole list of, uh, list of individual profiles, and this is a directory page. So I want to get rid of that. 
Okay, I'm back to, to, to Bing. Now, if we were using Google, uh, I could use the operator in URL to say, I don't want, sorry, this, this www bit is called a URL, yeah, and Google's operator in URL allows me to say, I want the following in the URL, and if I put a minus sign in front of it, it tells me I want web pages that don't have that in the URL. Well, well, well and good for Google, but Bing doesn't have it. Bing has something else. Thank you very much to Johnny Campbell, a social talent, pointing out this little interesting factoid to me. If I type in <clears throat> in stream set colon brackets URL close brackets colon, it does the same thing as Google's in URL. Because I've put a minus sign in front of it, that's my negation. That's me saying I don't want page with a DIR. The upshot is when I do my search, look at the results. Same as before, except I don't have accountants at the top. Okay, so that's a way of getting rid of pages with DIR on them. That said, Bing is quite an accommodating sort of search engine, and in actual fact, I didn't need that at all. I could have just put in minus DIR. It's not quite the same, but it's sort of close enough, and it does get rid of the, the pages without DIR on them, so you can operate that way, or you can use this in-stream set operator. So, quite a useful thing to do. What else have we got? Okay, one of the reasons that I quite like Bing is that Bing has some operators that Google doesn't. One of the operators is this one called near. What does near do? Let me show you. I'm going to type it in here. I'm going to go current near colon all in lowercase three space. What this tells Bing to do is find websites where the word current is near within three words of the word accountant. What do I get when I run this search? First of all, results are different. Good, it's doing something. When I go and have a look at Matthew's file here, I'm looking for the word current, and I'm looking for the word, is it profile it should be there, let me just refresh that. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> LinkedIn was a little bit strange there for me. So we found Matthew's profile. I'm looking for the word current. Find it. I've got less than three words and the word accountant. This is massively important. What does this do? Effectively, it enables me to use Bing to not only find web pages that have the word current and accountant on it, but to find web pages where the word current is really close to the word accountant. And in LinkedIn's case, current job title could well be accountant. So I'm able to find not just a LinkedIn profile that matches what I'm looking for, but I can actually say I want a current profile, or maybe I want his education, or maybe I want um, Twitter handles, or, or, or whatever else. I'm looking for words that are close to other words. Because we're doing an x-ray search of a website that I understand the format of, I can be very precise in exactly the information I want to get from that. Really, really powerful way to use to do something you cannot do with Google. You cannot use the near operator in Google. Hey, there are things you can do with Google that you cannot do with Bing. And you can do something similar to this. I'll show you how. I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to go back to Google. I'm going to put it in. So I'm going to change this search string from a Bing search string into a Google search string. First of all, I'm going to take the DIR, and I'm going to use the in URL operator to make sure that we don't have DIR pages. I'm going to modify this, and then I'll explain what I've done. Okay. I've taken out the near, because Google doesn't support it, and I've put in a star, and I've put current star accountant within quotation marks. Now, you may think to yourself that quotation marks mean a phrase. It does. So you might think to yourself, well, Google will go looking for a page that has exactly the phrase current space star space accountant. You might think that, but you'd be wrong, because that's not what it does. The star in this context is interpreted by Google to mean any number of words between one and five, or any words within one to five words, okay? Not zero words, not six words, one, two, three, or five words. And whenever I run this search, what do I get? Cool. First of all, I get different results to Bing. Bing, the first one on the result list was Matthew. Now I've got somebody called Joy. Let's have a look at Joy. OK. 
Okay, there's Joyce Page Loading. And I've got the word current. And I've got one word, senior. And I've got the word accountant. So we're looking for pages where accountant and senior, or current and accountant are separated by between one and five words. And that's what we found. Hey! So Google does allow you to be really specific in terms of the way that you search and find information on web pages whenever you're using x-ray search you can use these operators but you don't have to stop with one star what happens if you use two stars well you get something different let's find out okay this is where Google sort of folds over a bit <laughs> uh, because look what look what it's highlighting it's highlighting current senior accountant well that's not what I said we were gonna get what I said we were gonna get is current one to five words another one to five words and accountant. So if both stars are representing one word, then I need to have at least two words between current and accountant. Well, Google gets a little bit funny sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't really treat me with the respect I think I deserve, and it treats me like a bit of an idiot. Well, so be it. Uh, but what it's doing is it's trying to interpret what I have said in its own way, correct any mistakes I've made. But I actually want Google to say, no, just do what I've asked you to do. And you can tell Google to do that too. I mentioned this before as well. I'll quickly show you it again. If you click on uh, more tools down the, the left hand side, scroll down, you'll see that you've got this verbatim, verbatim search. I don't know Verbatim. I'm sure it's verbatim. Uh, and what you get is by applying verbatim search, you're telling Google, do exactly what I want you to do. Don't try and interpret it. Don't try and correct it. Just do what I've asked you to do. And what do you know? We get a Daniel here. To look at Daniel's result. We're looking for between two and ten words, and we've got current and one, two, three, four, five, six, accountant. So we've got between two and ten words, and it means that I can spread out the gap between those two words that I'm interested in, the current and the accountant keywords. Okay, what else have I got for you? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to show you one other use of a star and then I'm going to come back to looking at LinkedIn searches because I think people know and love LinkedIn searches. Um, let's delete all this. Now, I also use a star if I'm looking for email addresses. And I use a star because email addresses are a little bit awkward to get hold of. The reason, the reason being is because Google does not differentiate between if I search for intel-sw.com and I search for at intel-sw.com. Pretty well exactly the same results. Okay. Uh, the reason being because in this context the at symbol is totally ignored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a star symbol. Okay. Now please note verbatim searching is still on and that's important because if it was off Google wouldn't differentiate between the two. However, because of the fact it says, did you mean intel-sw.com, I know for a fact that Google differentiates between intel-sw.com and star intel-sw.com. Good news. And what we're finding, you see it highlighted here, email addresses, info at intel-sw.com, www.intel-sw.com, intel info, and so on. And so we're getting wedges with email addresses, web pages, reference the URL, which is very useful. If I was to remove the verbatim searches, Google will carry on with a mind of its own. <laughs> it will produce links to my domain without any reference to, um, uh, to, to, to email addresses. I scrolled. It'll even produce links to other people's domain. So it doesn't even find intel-sw.com. It just finds intel space sw. That's not what I was looking for. So uh, with, with a verbatim search, you can really hone in on what you want to do. Okay. Enough of this, let's get back to this topic of, of um, x-ray searching LinkedIn. This is back to Bing again. Why would you want to x-ray search LinkedIn? Why would you want to use a search engine to search LinkedIn when surely it is much easier simply to go to LinkedIn and search LinkedIn? Yes, it is. No real argument for me there. However, the reason I think you should know how to do it is because it gives you different results. It works in a different way. Whenever you do one search and one thing and don't find what you want, you want to do the same search somewhere else slightly differently so you do find what you want. There are some advantages to searching through a search engine. A couple of them. 
LinkedIn free account only limits me to seeing 100 profiles per search. On Google or Bing, I can see a thousand profiles if I ever wanted to. They're there for me. Google and Bing uh, don't know who I'm connected to. LinkedIn, on the other hand, gives me the results ordered by, generally speaking, my network. First degree, followed by second degree, followed by third degree or group connections. It's quite difficult for me to get all the information with regards to people that are not in my network through a LinkedIn search. That is not the case if I search through Google or through Bing. Finally, search engines allow you to search different things. LinkedIn is quite cagey about what it lets you search. What it does let you search, it lets you search it really, really well. Okay? But there are other things it doesn't let you search. So you have limited ability to search for, say for example, what groups people are in or who is in what groups if you're not in the group. But with, a, with an x-ray search you can. Let me show you what I mean. I run a group called, I run a couple of groups actually, one of them is called the South African Recruiters Group. And if I type in South African Recruiters in quotation marks, that's the name of the group, and do that search, I'm still looking for LinkedIn public profiles. I'm still negating directory pages. And what do you know? Stuart. I know Stuart. He works for Antel. And uh, he's in the South African Recruiters Group. Shane McCusker. Of course I'm in the South African Group. I, I, I manage it. And, and then all these other people as well. So by this, I'm able to search any group where people mention the group name on their profile, which most people do. I can find the people that are members of that group. Very, very useful thing to do, particularly if you can't get into the group. But there are some things that LinkedIn does better than X-ray search. In fact, there's a whole range of things that LinkedIn does better than X-ray searches. So let's have a look at LinkedIn and see what they are. Just going to go over to LinkedIn. As an aside, if you're not connected to me on LinkedIn and you'd like to connect to me on LinkedIn, please do so. Just search for me, Shane McCusker. Uh, and then send me a, a connection request. If you're watching the webinar or watching one of my videos, please just comment on it. Let me know what you think. Always, always nice to know, good or bad, always keen to hear. So, first of all, I'm just going to do a search. I'm going to search for accountants in Birmingham. Just going to put account in Birmingham and see what we get. <clears throat> Very basic search, and up it comes. And I've got 4,826 results. Google, sorry, LinkedIn, unlike Google or Bing, actually gives me fairly reliable results. It actually tells me how many people it finds with some level of, of accuracy, which, which the results on Bing and Google are, are horrendously incorrect. However, because of the fact that I have a very large network of predominantly recruiters, needless to say, I'm getting a lot of financial, albeit, recruiters, some of which are based in Birmingham, which is nice to see. So you can see people, recruitment, recruiter, recruiting, they're all recruiters. So how can I improve the search to find accountants, ideally in Birmingham? Well, first of all, I could have spelled Birmingham correctly, but that's another story. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I think this is really useful. Uh, this is Google, uh, LinkedIn's advanced search. There are, LinkedIn does have operators, but to be honest, at this point in time, I don't see a massive benefit in using the operators rather than just going into advanced search, because at least with advanced search, you know, I, I can get a bit of clarity as to what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for accountants. In fact, I'm going to look for an accountant or financial director. You can use ORs. You can use as many of them as you want. You can have lots of different terms in here. I, I'm surrounding financial director with quotation marks because it's a phrase. I'm looking for the current or past job. I can also do postcode radius searches in territories that have geographical postcodes. Birmingham does. So B11AA is a Birmingham postcode, and I can say within 25 miles. Let's do this search and see what I get. Okay, 4,270 results. Super duper. And an awful lot of these I can see just immediately. Finance, finance director. See people in Birmingham, Wolverhampton, Birmingham, Birmingham. So we're getting good quality results of people that are accountants, financial directors in the area that we're looking for. But bear in mind that this is only just one of a number of ways of defining where somebody is. Let's think about a few others. Earlier on when I was talking about looking for accountants, I said accountant or accountancy or SEMA or ACCA. You can determine somebody's location in all sorts of different ways. Firstly, place names. Okay, I've got London here, but London, somebody might say Silic or somebody might say the South Bank. Similar sort of areas. You may go bigger, you may go smaller. 
Who knows? You've got to use all those different terms. Postcodes. Again, there's lots of different postcodes that might be relevant to a particular area. Landline telephone numbers. Area codes on telephone numbers. Super way of finding people, particularly if you're looking for telephone numbers to contact people. Use all the different permutations. People use international codes. People put, use brackets, dots, dashes. Use all the different permutations. One of my favorite ways of finding people who work in a particular area, particularly in the skill set, is look for people who employ those people. Because if the employer is local, then the people who work there are almost certainly going to be local. And it means you don't need, they don't even need to specify the geography in. All they have to specify the company which they're working for. The other thing I'll say is that you should use negation as well. Not so much in LinkedIn, in this sense, but, but certainly in Google or Bing. So uh, Southwark, for example, there's a Southwark in Philadelphia you want to get rid of. If I'm doing a Birmingham search, I'd want to get rid of Birmingham, Alabama in, in the US and focus on Birmingham in the UK. Okay? So there's lots of different ways to think about this and do different things. Let's go back to uh, LinkedIn and see what we can come up with. So uh, I could, for example, take this search, <clears throat> go down and have a look at Birmingham. There we go. This is a whole lot of different potential phrases for people might use to define themselves in Birmingham. And here we go. Put it in keywords. Just anywhere. I don't care where it is in the, in the document. I'm going to remove the postcode and do my search and see what comes back. So in this search, I've actually got fewer results this time, but they're different results. They're different results, which means that I'm potentially going to get different people. And that's a good thing because it, it, it widens my scope of people that I can get hold of. Now, one of the things that I'm predicting on here, I'm tight on time, so I'm going to, I'm going to speed up a bit. This, I think, is probably the most useful section of this whole search result. On the right-hand side, left-hand side, rather, of a LinkedIn search, it tells you all the companies that employ people that are coming up in your search. And it ranks them by the largest employer downwards. Now, if you think about this from a recruitment point of view, this is m massively useful information. Because one, it tells you the type of people that are likely to employ the skill. Therefore, if you just do a search for, in this case, University of Birmingham, chances are I can get rid of all my keywords and just look at University of Birmingham, don't have to worry about geography. University of Birmingham accountants, I'm going to get lots of accountants because I know they employ lots of people. And one of the things that I'm really keen on doing, I did a, a recruitment campaign for ourselves not so long ago, um, and I put it out to a lot of recruiters. And I was particularly impressed with one company that came back very, very quickly, um, speculatively, and gave me their search sheet. I didn't ask for it, they gave it to me. And with this, you can create a search sheet. And what I mean by a search sheet is a list of all the places that you're going to search in to find the people that might be right for the job. And me, as a recruitment client, was bowled over by this. Now, I'm not an uneducated person in the world of recruitment, but I'd never seen this before. This was super. It gave me an awful lot of confidence as to what the recruiter was doing. How often does the recruitment industry hide what it is they're doing from their clients. So all they do, they take a brief and the next thing the client knows is, is three CVs arrived on their desk, which may or may not be close. There's no visibility of the internal processes and it's really impressive to see somebody who will expose those processes because you get a sense of it. Secondly, because he produced a search sheet, I was able to give him much more direction as to the brief that I wanted. And he was able to have that, that level of direction at, right at the outset of his search. So let's see how we build this up. Now, for this, I'm actually going to jump over to intelligence. I, I don't normally show our, our own products in, in these webinars, but today I'm going to because it does something very useful for me. Intelligence has a browser built into it. And one of the interesting things I can do is I can scrape any web page for links to LinkedIn. And then from those links, I can import them straight into intelligence. Pretty useful feature. But halfway through that does something particularly useful. I'm just going to delete what's here. Pardon me. What I can do, once I've done my search, is I can click on this Get Links button. Now, if you don't use intelligence, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to type this all in manually, but time's against me, so I'm going to use intelligence and do it quickly. I'm going to copy people, and I'm going to drop it into a blank Word document. I'm going to format that with a macro. Oops, <clears throat> let me try it again. I'm going to format it with a macro. There we go. And what have I got? I've got all the LinkedIn profiles and a whole lot of names. And if I filter these by the companies they work, I can produce a document that looks a bit like this one.
Imagine if you were my client and I was recruiting recruitment software salespeople. And within an hour of getting the specification, I send you a list of all your competitors, companies like Bullhorn, First Choice, Dilliston, and Microdate, all their salespeople, Chris, and Brian, Lindsay, and all the rest of it, all their job titles, and say, what do you think of all these people? Are these people close? Do these people match the specification you want? Immediately, I'm going to come back and give you a whole lot more information. Put your branding, put your logos all over. This took me at least, oh, five to ten minutes to prepare this. It's massively useful to you. And the information is so readily available, you can produce these documents. Take this, either use it internally. I know executive search companies always op operate this model, but how often do you very quickly deliver this type of information to your client? It doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be ballpark because what you want is to get your client to give you more information about the vacancy. Intelligence doesn't stop there, by the way. Um, I get a bit carried with intelligence. Pardon me if you're not an intelligence customer, but I know there are intelligence customers watching this. So please do this. This is the client screen on intelligence. Okay. Now I happen to be looking at a client, which happens to be called intelligence software. Uh, pardon me, this is a demonstration database. But one of the things that intelligence does, for every client record that you're looking at, it automatically cross-references in all your candidates who work there. It automatically cross-references in all their referees who work there. You know, passive job seekers, line managers, people that are important to your candidate and your clients and the ones you want to talk to, but we relate it to the companies in which they work. It pulls in all the people who mention intelligence software somewhere on the CV, and it also automatically links in all your LinkedIn connections who work there. If you want to put this into a spreadsheet, click somewhere in it, press Control A, which is select all, Control C, which is copy, move over to a blank Excel spreadsheet, press Control V to paste them all in. I've written a map of this, which does, oops, that didn't quite work. <clears throat> Nope, it's not working for me. <laughs> My macros stopped working. Okay, what it's supposed to do is supposed to give me something which is a little bit more intelligible and links me on more towards this type of document. And you can pull that straight from intelligence. And if, if unlike me, you do things in a hurry, you spend a little bit of time to get your macros right, it'll automatically format it in whatever way you want to format it. So literally, you can do it for four or five clicks per company and build up sheets like this very, very quickly. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Apologies, I've run three minutes over. Uh, thank you very much for your time. If you want any more information uh, or if you connect with me, I'd be delighted for anybody to do so. Uh, those are my details. Thank you very much for your time.